Hey traders, David Frost, my strategic forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Thursday, November 10, 2022. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What do we have on the docket today? Holy smokes, we have a litany of stuff on the docket. We're going to go through a whole bunch of stuff. I'm going to have lines going everywhere on the chart. You're going to get everything I've got because the market was telling us something today. And there's a whole host of stuff going on all at the same time. I mean, think about it for a moment. Today was the ultimate squeeze operation. Pies in the face running everywhere. It was a melt up on the CPI Kabuki theater situation. We had the thieves in the pre-market on the CPI Kabuki situation. This was, by definition, the rip-your-face-off rally. Now, let's go through this piece by piece. A, you're going to learn stuff, and B, you're going to get the information that you're looking for. Just give it some time as we walk through the situation. Let's start with the inverse head and shoulders pattern. We have no choice. We have to set the table for what's going on. So there's your left shoulder, there's your head, and then you have a right shoulder and a breakout. The breakout had then a back test. The back test bounced off, or the market bounced off after the back test. And here we are completing the inverse head and shoulders formation. Where is the actual completion? Well, let's go through it. I teach this in the course, Lazy E-Mini Trader, but what the heck? Let's go through how to calculate it. There's really two ways we'll go through them both. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the point in which the head, the top of the head, intersects the neckline. We're going to call it 376.50 for argument's sake. That's our benchmark. That's one of the benchmarks. We're going to take the distance to the top of the head. The low is 348.11. All we're going to do is we're going to take the same distance and we're going to use market symmetry to project forward. And we're going to do it from two areas. Either we're going to do it from the area that we just took the same measurement from right here, or we're going to do it from the point in which they broke out after the back test from here. And either way, there's about a five-point spread. So the numbers work out like this. Using 376.50, maybe the neckline is 377, maybe it's 376. It doesn't really matter. We're just looking for an approximate. If you want to needle it down and go to the exact penny, you can do it on your own. We're doing it for illustration purposes. So using the 376.50, you add that distance down to the low, which is the top of the head on the inverse head and shoulders neckline, you get 404. You get 28 bucks, you add that. To the 376.50, you get 404. You take it from the breakout, which is the second arrow, it's about five bucks less. You get 399. So, what you have to believe, if they're gonna actually complete the inverse head and shoulders pattern, they're gonna get the market up to around 400. Now, let's take a look at what's around 400. Well, right now, what did they do? They started getting into the next big breakdown candle in the sequence. Now, that also coincided with busting above the former high. Again, we don't have to look at it as a head and shoulders. We can look at it as a couple of other things. How about an A off the low, B pullback, C completion. So from that perspective, this pattern is complete. But they're getting into the next big breakdown candle in the sequence. Now, theoretically, The candle begins from the gap. It doesn't begin really from where the market opened that day. It begins up at the gap that was left open right around 407, the 200 period moving average right now. We're not worried about that spot right now. We're worried about the next major area of overhead resistance. Not that they have to get there tomorrow, but we're just talking about the big picture using the data we have on the chart not going down to the intraday stuff here. We're using the daily chart. And in doing so, we say, well, the first order of business is getting to the high of the actual breakdown candle from that day. It's at 403. The big fat round number is 400. 
The head and shoulders completion using one of the methods is 399. So you have to believe that the magnetism is going to pull the market up at some point to 399. Maybe they have a pullback first, nothing goes in a straight line. The trick trap fool and frustrate crew have to show up. They have to make you believe that the rally is over before it's actually over. But we're smarter than that. Unless they take back the entire thing on a complete collapse on Friday, giving back the entire CPI Kabuki rally, then this should have more upside to go. It was on decent volume today. 138, 139 million shares. That's not chicken scratch. That's meaningful. We had participation today. Something else I want to show you that I showed once or twice, but I didn't make a big deal of it. I want to show it again because now, after the fact, it emphasizes a point. We're going back to think about and look at the area in which we ran a test of the breakout area or the neckline of the head and shoulders formation. Same thing, that was the breakout and it was also a retest. Now watch this. If I take a trend line and I draw it from the high and I connect these points here, now we know the market broke out, but look where they went on the back test to the intersection of the two trend lines. Are there any accidents or coincidences? I don't think so. Why weren't you long for the lazy swing trader on that test? Frankly, it was two reasons. The election coming up, the melees around that period of time, and then today's CPI. And then we had the pre-market thieves, and they ran away. And that's really the story. I wanted to trade for the completion of the head and shoulders or inverse head and shoulders neckline as long as they were going to move up. And as long as they weren't going to get below, like I said last night, the neckline of the head and shoulders formation, then it was still the bullish tape. They ran away. I'm not going to chase the tape. That's just the way it is. That was the ultimate retest into two intersecting trend lines. It was picture perfect minus the election and the kabuki situation today. Knowing that the market moved on the last several CPI releases, knowing how important it is, not that we were going to get a quick drop, but at least let me get in on a confirmation that they weren't going to pull the rug out. I can't get in in front of something like that if they're going to pull the rug out. And frankly, it was still a coin toss. I don't care what anybody says. That back test is one for the picture perfect textbook situation. So net-net, before we move on to another chart, we're looking at, give or take, 400 from here. Could be higher, could be just short of it, but that's the general concept slash ballpark area. What's the number that we have to watch to see if it's going to either fail, break down, or backtest, maybe giving a possible entry? How about the last breakout area in the sequence? Funny how this works. What's that number? How about 390.39? If you see them come for a back test to 390.39, give or take, they could spike below it. If they don't close below it and stay below it, then it is just a back test like we went over on the back test of the inverse head and shoulders. How do you like them apples? We don't know they will do it, but if they do do it, it's something to pay attention to. I'm giving you a lot of stuff in this video. By the way, this is the perfect recipe for a classic comment from our new high guy, Keith LeBlanc. He's one of the VIP customers in the comment section. Weekly chart, what's going on here? They put it in a bottom. We're gonna start coming into an on-time type of situation. Now think about this for a moment. Next week is regular way options expiration week. Weird stuff happens. Maybe they send the market up into those moving averages, close to those moving averages, into the breakdown candle high, close to the breakdown candle high, 411, 412, 400, 405, 404, something in this neighborhood during options expiration week. Then we'll be getting into 
an on-time type of situation. It's an interesting recipe. Stay tuned. It's still a bounce in a downtrend. Looking at the big picture, there's your weekly chart trend line connecting the highs. They did have a near miss over here. This is where I wanted to short the market. I vividly remember it. They came up short and sold off. It's still a very important area. Do we think there are any accidents or coincidences that this trend line coincides with the 100 period moving average, which is also converging with the 50 period moving average? There are no accidents or coincidences. Let's look at one more accident or coincidence. Look at this intersection. The top line is from the weekly chart we just looked at. The bottom line is the original head and shoulders that never reached target, but it's still active until or unless they actually get above the neckline, the original neckline all the way over here, which depending on when they get there, coincides with somewhere around that intersection from the weekly chart, also the completion of the inverse head and shoulders pattern, this is going to be one for the textbooks if it actually works out like this. Inside the numbers, we're going to run through this quickly because it's obvious what we had today. We had a melt-up operation. However, let's see what was said and see what you could have done with it regardless of what you did do. We've got the CPI Kabuki data release around 8.30 a.m., so we already know that at zero dark 30, whatever happens before that doesn't really matter. The last several have been early and big market movers. So that's an awareness. And that's why I said what I said before. Regardless of where markets are at the time, they're going to move them. We'll cover some stuff at extremes. And they don't see like extremes now. They were extremes this morning before they had a melt up slash rip your face off rally. So let's go forward to after the release, and there you have it. The first move is a rip up in the northern direction. Let's see if it holds. So it did hold some early expectations for today. Now pay attention because when these days happen, you have to get a handle on what's actually going on. Forget about what they're telling you in the media. Just using the charts, you have to have a sense for what the game is. If they get to a really, really important spot this morning, there might be a short opportunity. Traders willing and able will need to assess their own risk. The melt-up slash squeeze operations are more of a spectator sport for most. All right, let's keep going for a second. We've got a specific area, 385.12 down to 384 will be a zone. It's a zone of importance. Staying above 385 keeps the door open for a continued push higher. Where was 385? We'll go back to the chart in a moment and we'll see it and it'll become obvious why. Above there, they get into the vacuum. And by the way, stocks on the move were a non-event because of the melt-up operation, so we don't have to waste our time over there. Now, 915, they're melting up. Above 385.12, in the vacuum situation, they're headed for 388, give or take. It's magnetic, important, and overhead resistance. Shorting the market right out of the gate is a high-risk situation. Here's the layout. Big risk equals big reward. However, in a squeeze operation, you really don't know where they'll stop, especially first thing right after the bell. I can provide the numbers, such as 388, give or take, as a really important spot. However, only a trader who fully understands how quickly and much they can be wrong should entertain a short like this. Normal day, different story. The thing in the back of your mind should be the completion of the inverse head and shoulders pattern. What I'm putting in your mind is they can get sucked up a lot higher today, tomorrow, whatever. And this is also before the opening bell. So you have to have a full and complete understanding of what's going on. They're not going to do it in one shot. They'll play some games and have a shakeout operation from where and when is the pre-market question. Okay, fair enough. So what we're saying here is 388 is the spot. Okay, 931, any trader that took the short needs to book profit. Why? Because they hit the number right out of the chute and pulled back about 22, 23 points immediately. Traders are trained to take profit along the way. They hold a trailer for the just-in-caser, but the rest becomes a risk-free, emotionless trade because once they start trading 
back above or even to or right in front of, at worst case, your entry point, that's it. The trade's over. You just punch out of the rest of it. You cover the rest of it. You got your profit in the pocket, and that's the end of it. By the way, what was the 385.12 right here? The high of 385.12. That's a breakout area. They didn't get there today. They almost made the back test. That's the same thing we've been talking about before. These are all textbook definitions of back test. Yeah, they didn't get there today, but look at the head and shoulders inverse. Look at the other stuff. Back tests. Now, let's pay attention to what else we have on the board. 385.12 is the official breakout area. So if they come back, it's going to be important. So that's what I wanted everybody to understand early on. And by the way, it would make a good exit for the shorts. Why? Because they're likely to get a bounce around there, which happened in front of it either way. Shorts got a nice trade. Jordan had it in the room. Traders in the room had the trade. Everybody got paid on the trade. Anybody that wanted it. Then the prize becomes a spike of 390. That's the morning prize. That's the early prize. You didn't have to be a rocket scientist to see that one coming. There's your 390, the spike of 390, and the pullback. Same routine. Trader wants to ride it up from the breakout area to the next spot. That's up to them. Very hard for me to encourage someone else to chase the market. That's just not a wise thing to do using the 80-20 rule the majority of the time. And here it is, 956. And after that, if they're going to go, it's to complete the inverse head and shoulders pattern around 393 or higher. That's for today. I'm not talking about in here the inverse target that we just discussed there. This was kind of a today number. Pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart to double check the work. There's notes in here, but you saw the market. It was a runaway train. It is what it is. And then, of course, we've got an all the same market situation. Obviously, the IWM, my favorite market leading indicator, was up over 6% today. The SPY was up almost 6. This one was up over 6. What market is up 5 and 6% in one day? Not equity market. That's unique. It's not normal. It's a bounce in a bear market. These type of things don't happen under normal garden variety market conditions. They're in a slightly different position than the S&P. You see, they just approached the high here. We've got the 200 period moving average. They'll bust through. They're going to target the gap all the way up here. That's the next major target for the IWM. Again, not rocket science to see that one. Where does it look like the IWM is falling apart if they reverse tomorrow? How about 183? It's not that far away. Start getting below 183, and it's not that they're falling apart, but they shouldn't be specifically closing hourly, closing daily below 183. Maybe a test but they shouldn't be below 183 if this thing's going to go up north. Got to be the umpire calling balls and strikes. What about the folks down at the transportation department? We've been talking about this canary in the coal mine quite a bit lately. The chart was looking different from all the rest. We had a one down day or a one day down yesterday, and here we are shooting up 750 points, over 5%, into the 200 and across over the 200 period moving average. Tremendous move for the folks down at the transportation department. You look at the weekly chart and it doesn't take any more rocket science to see where the magnetic force will be taking them right into the convergence of those moving averages. Doesn't mean they have to stop there, but that magnet thing should draw them into that. Doesn't have to happen tomorrow. They're gonna have some shakeouts along the way like everything else. That's the way the market works, but that's where they're headed on the next major stop. The Q people, here's the weekly chart. They're still not really in anywhere near a similar position as some of the other markets. However, from a daily chart perspective, they should get into the 100 period moving average. They should get to 293.50 to 294, spike above the 100 period moving average. That will be overhead resistance. Put that on a sticky note. How about the XLF? What'd they do today? They filled the gap. Just that simple. That's where they were headed. That's what they did. They should have did that. They were eating time off the clock under the 100 period moving average. Make it the 200 period moving average. The other ones are underneath. Remember what we said the other night. Big chunks of the S&P were not melting away. There was nothing wrong with the financials. 
There was nothing wrong from a short-term perspective within the scheme of things. Nothing wrong with the financials and the transports were doing their thing, the canary. We talked about energy, another big chunk of the S&P. So all these things play into the reasons why, as long as they were above that neckline in the S&P, no short for me. Smash mouth, like everything else, tremendous day. Look at this, up 10%. That's not normal. That's a short squeeze. Next stop, 217, give or take. Who would have thunk? Remember we talked about this monthly chart the other day, a couple of times? Spike the 50 period moving average. Here's the bounce. In the big scheme of things, when you look at not the daily, not the intraday, not the small moves here and there, when you look at this and you say, look, the distance between the high and where they found the low, they spiked through the 50. If it's going to be a low, aren't they going to bounce up just even a reasonable amount of points? And the answer is, sure, why not? Just eyeballing this, the 382 retrace is probably right around two and a quarter, 230, something in that neighborhood. It's not that far away when you look at the monthly chart. Seems a distance, hard to see it day in and day out with all the news and the melees and the talking heads and the down days and all that stuff. But in the big scheme of things, just look at this when you just clear out the noise. Look at a weekly or a monthly chart and you look at this on time, they bottom into a moving average, put in a sign or signal of a trend change, and here we go. You have to be the umpire calling balls and strikes. Have I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you? Without you, these videos are not possible. That is true and accurate information. We're pulling the ripcord here today. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.